and we are over the target exposing their criminal operations. Thank you so much for joining us. Now already 13 days into 2019 on this Global Sunday edition. We're here every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Then weekdays, I'm here, 11 a.m., 3 p.m. Central. David Knight, of course, recuperating from a heart attack. But thank God, getting a lot better. Plans to come back very soon. We have a great filling crew mornings, 8 a.m., um, filling in for him. Harrison Smith and others doing a great job. And then, of course, we have the great Owen Schroyer, 3 o'clock every day with the War Room with Roger Stone and others popping in. I've really learned the formulaic deception of mainstream corporate media. Really being inside of how it works, being a target of it, I've really learned how incredibly command and control it is. And now since the days of the Cold War, they got our media in lockstep to put out particular narratives. And now they can swing that around. When was it? It was Seven years ago, Obama got Congress to, quote, legalize, was in foreign affairs and foreign policy, of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Washington Post. In fact, guys, put me those articles, please. You have to click web. It's old. And then they try to bury it. But Congress legalizes lying to the American people. Or Congress legalizes CIA propaganda in America. And that was the genesis or the progenitor, or the zenith of the current legislation we live under that Obama signed as he left office. Kind of like you'd set a self-destruct on a ship that you were about to abandon, but you thought the enemy was about to board and take. So he set the bombs to destroy the First Amendment and wreck the economy and then jumped out. But anybody can type in, U.S. government quietly legalizes domestic propaganda. U.S. government quietly legalizes lying. There it is. U.S. repeals. Talk a lot about this because if you know this riddle, you've got the answer. The skeleton key to so much. The globalists don't like this broadcast for a lot of reasons. We have a big audience. We're patriotic. We don't like monopolies. We love America. And we've been studying the corporate global elites, and we know how to defeat them. And we've done our research. So if you really want to get a very crisp grasp on wide spectrum analysis of what's happening in the world from a perspective of a kamikaze, because they do come after you when you do this, you found the place here. You found the media operation that the enemy is working round the clock from the Democratic Party to leftist arms of the CIA to shut down because they can't be engaging in their domestic propaganda operation to bring us into the one world government if we are awake, if we are aware of what they're doing. So let me, for radio listeners, read you the headline, but for uh, TV viewers, we can do a document cam shot and I can show folks a few headlines here from the last six, seven years. Here's one right here, U.S. repeals Propaganda ban spreads government-made news to Americans. Now, that's out of the Washington Post foreign policy. If you read deeper, Congress said they've legalized lying to the American people. That's 2013 as Obama was preparing to get into his second administration. Now, previous, the CIA and others would go lie in foreign countries for political aims. Oh, but we're just doing it to beat the bad guys. But of course, they knew that news would come right back to the U.S., so it was always blowing back. But then Obama legalized domestic lying against the American people and against companies and groups and political parties in 2013. And that year, you saw the media go completely weaponized. Because there wasn't just intelligence agencies involved, there was government funding of those buying fake news. Remember Bush got caught spending billions on fake news? And then Obama radically expanded it. So what were they going to do when real independent news, like NewsWars.com or InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com or DrudgeReport.com, was actually pointing out, hey, look, they said this last month, now they're saying this. So 
if you understand that, you understand that when Hillary was saying, when I get elected, I'm going to take out the fake news, what she meant was groups and individuals that are going to try to counter our narratives, whether they be telling the truth or whether they've got it wrong or whether they've got it right or whether it's a mix of that, we don't want anybody but us putting narratives out. So under this plan, we're going to reach out to every newspaper and TV station in the country, and we're going to tell them you're going to work with liaisons from the Department of Defense, the CIA, Department of Energy, and others, and you're going to put out talking points, we say, or we're going to have your boss fire your ass. That took them a few years to get this whole thing going. But then we started seeing the talking points leaked that were being sent to TV stations and local papers. And guess what? If they didn't play ball, suddenly they got audited. They got harassed. They got shut down. So that's how this is working. So U.S. repeals propaganda ban spreads government-made news to Americans. Now, I've, I've probably shown this article 500 times or more in the last two and a half years, or last two years and three months or whatever. Obama quietly signs the Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act into law. And then they say, if we deem someone's connected to a foreign group in any way, we will do anything we need, including suing them, shutting them down, organizing fake news against them, uh, censoring them, you name it. And then that's why they would then, through groups they hired, send one tweet to Drudge or one tweet to the Washington Post or one tweet to any group. And then if, 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 if one tweet even went to you and showed up in your feed, that's the headline. Infowars, Washington Post and others, all were involved in Russian propaganda. Remember those headlines? I'll show them to you in a moment. And then you read the report, it's like, Jones, as Twitter more than 25 times, retweeted something we think was connected to Russians. See how that works? So they, they legalized having the CIA involved in the takeover of media seven years ago. Then they start putting out the propaganda. Then they hire bots in Russia that are just Internet firms anybody can hire. 80% of the bots in the last election, last presidential election, were pro-Hillary. So they even ran pro-Hillary bots over everybody's site, but then turned around and said, oh, if we, if we even posted a comment on your Twitter or your Facebook, you're a Russian agent now. See how that works? Even though it was like less than one-tenth of one percent of total traffic on the whole web, Russian bots, it didn't matter because just like the data dump uh, leak of last year showed in Vault 7, the CIA has these tools to then frame people. There it is, Recode. The Washington Post, Miami Herald, Infowars, and other U.S. sites spread Russian propaganda from Twitter. Now you read it. They consider retweeting an RT story about an airplane blowing up. You're a Russian. So then they start having hearings in 2017 saying Infowars are Russian agents. We've proven they retweet Russian propaganda 20 times or whatever. So anything out of Russia, just it, it, you, you do it, you look at it, it, it's over. You're going to, a, you know, basically a gulag in the sky. And so once Obama gets in, he sets all this up and they put billions of dollars in defense spending before he leaves into this and starts this whole engine up that's paid for. The Washington Post is paid by the CIA. The New York Times is paid by the CIA. It's all in the act to certain key mockingbird operatives who are actually on the double payroll. So the publisher's paid, the journalist is paid extra money on top of their salary to put lies out. And then they put the talking points out. That's why you see talking points against Trump or myself. You'll see a thousand newspapers, and it's the same article, only basically rewritten. There it is. FBI's Russian inquiry is reported looking into Infowars and Breitbart. And see, you go, well, what's the point? That's two years later. Nothing's found. The, the fact that you're under investigation triggers the, the, the domestic disinfo group coming after you and not just putting out disinfo about you, but financing lawsuits against you, against InfoWars, against Trump. And then they'll just put out outrageous headlines that are all lies, 
and then have other people respond to those lies to create a total echo chamber of disinformation. Because remember, in the Washington Post, in the Council on Foreign Relations, in CNET News, in congressional hearings, I just showed you the articles, they said, we've legalized lying to you using U.S. intelligence agencies. What could go wrong? Well, you've seen what could go wrong. Headline this morning, I get up 6 o'clock. I slept in late because it was a Sunday. I go to the enemy transmission arm, the main command base of CNN. Enemy of the people. Works for the chi -coms, the EU, sworn to stop an American recovery. Headline, Trump secretly met with the Russians and destroyed evidence. And then the third paragraph admits, actually it's completely standard for when a president meets privately with a world leader that he takes the notes to review. But they, they add that line, but then the headline is, oh my God, we caught him with the Russians. Just like the fake story that Manafort met with Assange in The Guardian. Was it true? It didn't matter. They know you forget about that. So this is the globalists that want to destroy the country, that want to break down the borders, that want to demoralize the family, that want to do all this, and they've set up a domestic group engaging in the targeting of not just the American people, but the people of the world, and they're an anti-American group of globalists. Now we come back, now that you have that perspective, the big story. We're covering the criminal actions of Obama, who, who turned the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda and ISIS loose all over North Africa and the Middle East, killing over a million people, uh, who then brought in incredible internet censorship, uh, who, who got, got laws passed to let foreign-controlled uh, uh, intelligence agencies put disinfo and lies in the American press and try to put that witch Hillary Clinton into place. But it didn't go the way they wanted. But when Hillary still lost the election, they just continued on with the deep state embeds, as Trump calls them, inside the government. So now that we've talked about that a little bit today, let's go ahead and move on to the next big developments. Now, I shot a very important video for Infowars.com last night, live, that aired. And I'm going to take folks to Infowars.com, and I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to show it. Deep State panics over New York Times confirming active FBI coup against Trump. And I'll tell you what's amazing about that. You read the article, and it's all over the news spinning it like Trump's a Russian agent. And they show pictures of the president standing next to Putin like, if you see a president standing next to Putin, that means he's an agent of him. And you see the fake headlines that Trump ordered evidence of him meeting with Putin destroyed. And you read the article, they go, it's actually completely normal to have this go on. All other presidents do it with other leaders. He just simply asked for the notes so he could review them. But the headline's fake. And then when you get in the body of it, they know you don't read that. It then gets into more details. So this is how they spin this. And they're building towards a crescendo now with all these fake House-controlled Democrat investigations where the New York Times comes out and says, look, Trump was under investigation by the FBI. And then in paragraph, as being a Russian spy, and then by paragraph nine, you learn nothing was found and he wasn't. But it doesn't matter. Because they've already got the headline up. Now, why they do that? Because they know... There's grand juries in Virginia and in Maryland that are looking at indicting. This is mainstream news. McCabe, Comey, Hillary, Strzok, Page, Robert Mueller, all of them. So they know it's all coming out that they lied to Congress when they said he wasn't under espionage investigation. And that's illegal. They know they lied to the president. And, and we know from the emails and text messages, the ones that Mueller hasn't destroyed, that they were doing it to try to keep him from being elected and then from him being sworn in and then to have him impeached. So that means it's the definition of an internal coup by U.S. security services, which is the number one way third world countries become third world. Because instead of being about production and your national identity and tourism and what you stand for, you just start having the security services overthrow the elected leaders, and then it's a downward spiral like Rome or like anywhere else. 
And that's it. It's all cut and dry. But instead of it being, oh, my gosh, Trump was right. They were spying on him for espionage with no evidence, and they found none. Instead, it's like, oh, look, he was under investigation. Not, wait, Rosenstein and McCabe and others, we even have the video clips. It's up on Infowars.com, these articles. They even testified to Congress and met with Congress and met with all these people and told them lies. So the story should be Democrat-controlled rogue FBI units caught in live coup attempt against Trump administration. Or major leaders of the Justice Department FBI caught being Democratic operatives trying to run coup against Trump and perjuring themselves to Congress. I mean, it is cut and dry. And see, they've committed so many crimes. They've done so many horrible things now. They know there's grand juries out to get them, so the media gets crazier and crazier. Look, it's Trump secretly meeting with Putin. He ordered it destroyed. You read the article, it goes, actually, it's quite normal and blah, blah, blah. He didn't order anything destroyed. Trump concealed details from meetings with Putin. And you read the article, go ahead and scroll down for TV viewers. It says, actually, this is completely normal and all administrations do it. All he did was ask for the notes. And then when they asked Trump about it, he said, I didn't order anything concealed. This is, I could care less. This is, these, are, these are crazy meetings. Again, the Post notes that this behavior by Trump is not unusual per past presidential standards. Then you read it, he concealed nothing. As if the president can't meet with whoever he wants. So let's continue here. Jim Hoff did a great job at thegatewaypundit.com going over all this. High treason. New York Times reveals formation of active FBI coup against President Trump based on outlandish rumors. The liberal media wants you to believe Trump is a foreign spy and that crooked James Comey is a hero. Even though the whole Democratic Party cosmology is about hating America and no borders, no walls, no USA at all. And America sucks and all this stuff. American flags are bad. The report reveals the deep state FBI opened an investigation on Trump after he fired James Comey in 2017. And the investigation was launched based on unverified rumors from the Steele report, which they admit is a fraud paid for by Hillary and run by the wives and husbands of the FBI agent. The New York Times admitted in the report that there is no evidence that Trump campaign ever had any contact with Russian government officials. The New York Times buried the nugget in the ninth paragraph in their sensational report. Now, this is Jim Hoff writing, these political operatives leading the FBI should be tried for treason. Their job at the FBI is not to run a coup against the sitting president based on ridiculous rumors. They should be tried and hanged. And it goes on from there with Trump's tweets about it. Look, these are just the little puppet minions. I just want them to get off our back and people to realize they're the ones trying to plunge the stock market. They're the ones openly try trying to get rid of our borders and take our guns. I mean, these globalists are out of control. Meanwhile, here's a few of the other articles I mentioned. More deep state crimes. Rod Rosenstein and FBI Director Ray, not just McCabe, Deputy Director, lied to Trump in Congress, said he was not under investigation when he was. That's a big damn deal state coup plan operating for over a year and a half against the president. And what's even more amazing is all of the top members of the deep state from the FBI and Justice Department who are involved have testified to Congress and made public statements that there was no espionage investigation of the president ongoing. And then, just as important, the New York Times has to admit that there was no connections or any evidence of any type connecting President Trump to any type of collusion or activity with the Russians. And then on top of that, we then learned that the FBI was actively covering up Hillary and Robert Mueller and others' connections to Russia and China and others selling this nation out. Now, to understand the big picture and what's coming next and how this nation and the world is at a very dangerous crossroad, it's important to remember that it was Infowars.com and Newswars.com more than two years ago that began to lay out 
what was actually happening from our sources, but also my deep research about how the deep state operated. That's why they were so obsessed with getting us off the air. So after I lay out this latest information that is incredibly historic and dangerous, I'm going to then get into the history of it and what's coming next, because those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. But you're about to find out why InfoWars is so feared and why they want us off the air, because the crimes committed here are high treason. Now, let's get straight into it right now. High treason. That's Jim Hoff's headline at Gateway Pundit. It's incredibly accurate. New York Times reveals formation of active FBI coup against President Trump based on outlandish rumors. Hoff does a great job of succinctly boiling it down. On Friday, the New York Times published the latest deep state leak that the FBI investigated U.S. President Trump after he fired crooked director James Comey. The liberal media wants you to believe that Trump is a foreign spy and that crooked Comey is a hero. The report reveals that deep state FBI opened an investigation into the president after he fired James Comey in May of 2017. The investigation was launched based on unverified rumors. And this is what's most important. We now know that Hillary Clinton, the DNC, and George Soros all funded the British Steele dossier, as it's known, all of it proven to be a fraud, all of it to be proven a lie. So again, this was being used during the campaign against Trump, and it was being used to open an illegal national security investigation then that's been discovered. That was being done by the CIA and others, run by Obama and run by the State Department with all the Hillary uh, cronies. So that's the huge number one crime. But now this new crime that, that they were trying to frame the president, trying to wear a wire and do all this, the fact that they first denied it and testified to Congress it didn't happen and told the president it didn't happen, Rosenstein and others, shows you the cut and dry crimes that have been committed here. But we've got to ask the question, why are they bringing this up in the New York Times now and admitting the truth? I'll get to that in a moment, but continuing with Jim Hoft. The New York Times admitted in their report that there is no evidence that the Trump campaign ever had any contact with Russian government officials. The New York Times buried this nugget in the ninth paragraph in their sensationalist report. These political operatives leading the FBI should be tried for treason. This is his words. Their job at the FBI is not to run a coup against the sitting president based on ridiculous rumors. They should be tried and hanged. Then he goes into the president's tweets on this subject. Understand, these were individuals appointed and brought in by the Clintons, by Obama, who famously protected Hillary Clinton and others, all of them. Comey, McCabe, Rosenstein. This was the cabal who'd already tried to set the president up with Russians during the campaign, we now know. That was unsuccessful. So now they had to have a new counter-espionage investigation to cover up the fact that they had indeed uh, been involved in criminal spying on the campaign. Here's the New York Times article itself. FBI opened inquiry into whether Trump was secretly working on behalf of Russians. And again, the corporate media uses this like, oh my gosh, they were looking at him. They were thinking he might be a Russian. Instead of it being, they all told us that he wasn't the target and they all lied to Congress. Of course, he was always the target. FBI investigation into whether Trump was Russian agent handed over to special counsel. Is Mueller still investigating? And we know for a fact they're going to everyone they can who even has any connection to Trump and trying to set them up, saying the Russians want to give you money. The Russians are your friend and no one has taken the money. And that's why they're in a total and complete panic mode. Believe me, I know. Uh, continuing, New York Times reveals FBI launched coup against President Trump based on rumors. That is our report, boiling it down at InfoWars.com. Comey's fired off cryptic tweets in response to Trump tweet storm saying that you know a man by his enemies. And then members of Congress and others point out all the laws Comey and others broke doing this. Now, here's another excellent article pointing this out from Gateway Pundit. More deep state crimes. Rod Rosenstein and FBI Director Ray lied to Trump and Congress, said he was not 
under investigation. And that's why this is such a huge situation. This article goes through the testimonies, through the reports, through public statements uh, by Rosenstein uh, and others. But see, Ray's not going after any of them because he lied to the president as well and claimed he wasn't part of the cabal with McCabe, Comey, Robert Mueller, and others. Very important. Look at that. And the good news is it's even now in the Associated Press that grand juries have been convened, as we first broke over a year ago, to look at the indictment uh, of McCabe, to look at the indictment of Ray, to look at the indictment of Comey and Robert Mueller III. Here's a Newsweek headline. Trump wasn't and isn't target of FBI Russian investigation, says Republican Oversight Committee Chairman, who again had testimony by these individuals saying he wasn't. Why are they now having to come out and admit that they were illegally spying on him during the campaign, and then once Trump got into office, uh, they had an FBI criminal investigation into some people that worked for him, nothing to do with Russians, but taxi cab companies and things like that, so they could compromise people around Trump to then falsely testify against the president. But because he's so clean, they've not found anything that could ever be connected to him. Out of his thousands of associates, they can find some corrupt people, but they can't pin it to Trump. So why are they bringing it out now? Because they know these grand juries are very close to handing down indictments against these individuals, starting with Clinton operative and Comey uh, apprentice, uh, Comey adjunct, aide-de-camp McCabe. And they also know that because of Infowars.com and Newswars.com and our deep research laying out the roadmap of this, uh, that it's on record everything that has happened. And so there's no way they're going to be able to hide it forever. So they're bringing out themselves with the spin that, oh, look, Trump's this mastermind, you know, criminal so bad they were having to criminally investigate him after they lied to the whole world and said they weren't and lied to Congress. All of it based on a fake dossier where none of it's true. There's no witnesses. The Jane Doe's are fake. Trump is a control freak about running his own life. He is in hotel rooms with hookers pissing on him. That's R. Kelly pissing on teenage girls. That's, that, that, that's the left protecting him. That's the other way around. So this is the type of stuff these scumbags come up with. FBI director, the deputy director, the deputy head of the Justice Department, all lied to Congress, all lied to Trump. There wasn't an espionage investigation open on him. They're not their own branch of government. They have to admit what's going on. And the media is forced to admit it. So they spit it like, look, he was under investigation. Yeah, we know. We've known all along they're trying to overthrow this election. We've understood this the whole time, and now you've got the former deputy director of the FBI and others under grand jury criminal investigation for perjury and lying to Congress and obstructing justice. They're the criminals. They're the ones that covered up for Hillary. They're the ones that did it all. But by the way, you're not just hearing that live here on Sunday night for the first time. We show TV viewers and radio listeners a shot here. We already read these articles. High treason. New York Times reveals formation of active FBI coup against the president. Working with breakaway groups in the CIA. And I just showed you the Washington Post admitting that. That they've perjured themselves to Congress. And that they're under grand jury criminal investigation. Washington Post. That's why they're fighting so hard. Because they are scared. Now, let's go back to Infowars.com, next year's news today, why they want to shut down. Because while everybody else is chasing their tail and playing tiddlywinks and all this, we know the architecture. By the way, we're not proud we know the architecture. The globalists are such arrogant, white shoe boy lawyers, candy asses, that they act like no one reads white papers. So you've got a bunch of bull in the newspapers, but in white papers, they had in the... Council on Foreign Relations Journal two years ago that they had active think tanks at the Pentagon going to every office of, of, uh, of different groups lobbying for a military coup over Trump. I'm like, here's the Council on Foreign Relations calling for a military coup. You better take that serious headline. Jones is crazy. He says they're planning a coup. Because, again, something this big, they've got to go do this in these councils of government like it's no big deal.
They walk in with straight faces saying all this. And they've threatened me. They've threatened almost everybody I know, not just here, but in Europe, that if you don't lay down, we're going to get you. Well, you know what? You're the criminal. You're like some guy in a bank aiming a gun at me saying, your election doesn't count or I'll get you. Well, then fill your hand, you little dirty bastard. And if America had its instincts, again, to be the greatest country on earth, instead, we've got the instincts, a great many people do, of a, of a, of a castrated pig. But back to this article. Deep state pushes coup against Trump over Comey firing. That's Kit Daniels, May 2017. And it lays it all out, their whole fake clandestine operation, and then globalist documents saying America's a failing state. We must remove Trump. And then later when we say that's wrong, they go, we're not doing that. We're not doing that because they lie as their instinct. Deep state pushes coup against Trump over Comey firing. Here's another one. May 17th, Jerome Corsi, Infowars.com. Deep state mainstream media push coup d'etat against Trump. And then there's videos of me saying it all. They wrote articles around my statements. Breaking. Indictments ready for McCabe and others. Trump delivers on live extension technologies June 1st, last year. But some of those were 2017. Oh, look, tomorrow's news today. Tucker Carlson then, a year after we say it, Tucker Carlson, deep state launching coup against Trump to overthrow the election. Now, again, this is not about me sitting up here saying, look how smart I am. I'm not smart. But if you want to study how governments work, you want to study how these things operate, then you better actually figure it out. They don't give you on the normal national news how anything works. They give you a bunch of bull. So imagine all this has come out and they spin it like a rogue group of FBI was spying on the president and didn't find anything. That turns into, oh, He's obviously a criminal. The FBI was investigating him as a Russian agent. When all of them are telling the president and Congress is under oath, oh, of course not. Oh, no, 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 no. And then McCabe and Comey, they're all Democrat darlings protecting Hillary with real uranium to the Russians and missiles, the chi -coms, And that's what's even worse is that not only are they trying to frame a good man, and myself, I mean, I'm in congressional hearings. I don't get to attend them. I don't get to be at, talked to. But I go to hearings where they talk about me and the Russian agent. He's been here today. He's right over there. Why once there was a <coughs> Twitter commenter that we think was from Russia on his Twitter. I'm not on tarmacs like Robert Mueller giving them weapons-grade illegal uranium that then Hillary gives them 25% of our supplies of. No. No. I'm a Russian agent because I'm a loyal American fighting them, the globalists that openly hate America. And that's the big takeaway from this whole thing, and that's why I get so upset. So they're bringing in NewsGuard and all these governmental groups from the Council on Foreign Relations openly, quote, working with U.S. intelligence agencies and other trusted fact-checkers, Media Matters, Southern Poverty Law Center, you know, the folks that got Franklin Graham banned off Facebook, to take over at the device level. Meaning they're going to pop in on your phone or computer when you visit sites and warn you not to go there, meaning they're watching you in live time in a deal with Amazon, Google, and Microsoft rolling out on almost every device in the country in three months. Three months. It's all being announced. Device level control, and next, obviously, will be URL blocking. We've already had people on iPhones, and I've confirmed it, blocking, being able to click on your RSS feeder on an Apple phone, and go to the Infowars.com RSS feeder system. They're doing this, meaning in the next three months with all the fake investigations and the riot groups they've got ready and all the stabilization they've prepared to try to take Trump out. And then that's the internet kill switch, selectively seeing what URLs you visit and where you go and what you do 
blocking you at the URL level from your phone itself, the Chinese social credit score that InfoWars first broke six years ago. It's here. They're going to make their move on Trump now. I remember being told by folks in counterterrorism from Fort Bragg, high level, that they're going to make their move. I said this about six, eight months ago. They're going to make their move in April. They said, Alex, it's not the election. They're trying to steal that. But they said if they can't take him out then, they're going to move on Trump by April. And now it lines up with that because in April, the total takeover of all your devices, everything happens. You won't be on CNN or you won't be on Google or Facebook or Twitter and you see an Alex Jones article and they've got some you know, projected deal on the screen at the URL level from, from that company. This will be on your phone with live people sending you messages watching what you do. This is total treason. It makes 1984 look like a free country. It, 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 it's, it's total, complete evil. And if we just call it out and see it for what it is, it's over. But if we don't, they're going to win. So the president and Congress have to recognize how dire the straits are with NewsGuard and the Southern Poverty Law Center and all these organizations and understand that they're trying to destroy our borders, they're trying to destroy our currency, our country, our stock market. They hate the American flag. The Ninth Circuit's ruled you can't show the American flag. They say you can't even be a nation. That that's bad. They say there's no crisis on the border. When, the whole, when Mexico's a failed state with hundreds of thousands dead, uh, these people are the enemy working with radical Islam to invade the West. They are the people that are doing all of this. And if we don't stand up and speak out against them, we deserve what we get. It's that simple. And so you've got criminals in our government working with foreign corporations and foreign governments. Davos admitted it two years ago that the president of China is working with the U.S. government to block Trump. And now you've committed all these incredible crimes and the people happen to get a good president in who's at least just trying to be the president and trying to turn the economy back on. And now you've used illegal spy networks and all this against them. And you've been caught. And every day you know you're closer to going to prison so the headlines get wilder and wilder and wilder. Trump's a Russian agent, said destroy evidence of it. And then it says, actually, he didn't. It's quite normal. He asked for the notes for the meeting. But they're the globalists. They're the anti-Americans. Of course, that's what they're going to do. And when you get into how insane it all is and how there's no way these globalists are ever going to get away with it, that's really what gives me heart. Because Peter Strzok in these text messages the FBI, he's the bag man for all this stuff. Once Trump actually gets in office, he's like scared. He goes, we're going to go to jail. What are we going to do? Uh, this isn't going to work. Uh, quote, there's nothing big here. There's no Russian collusion. So imagine they've committed all these crimes. They've covered up for the Russians. They've sold out to the Chinese. They've sold out to anybody that would give Hillary Clinton and her foundation Billions and billions and billions of dollars. And now the walls are closing in. So they feel the walls closing in. So when you watch CNN, they go, the walls are closing in on Trump. But here's the problem. They're targeting reporters. They're targeting talk show hosts. They're targeting members of Congress and threatening them and using NSA and CIA data that Clinton and Hillary operatives have access to to blackmail people on not paying taxes, on mistresses, on boyfriends, on things like that. And so they don't know what to do because they're able to blackmail the government, not on Russia, not on China, but on just regular stuff that isn't even really corruption in most cases. But it doesn't matter because I'm not giving up. Trump's not giving up. People are waking up all over the world. Populists are getting elected all over the world. And they don't know what to do. And they're scared. And so it's what happens when the immovable object runs into the unstoppable force. And it's guaranteed the globalists are not going to make it out of this.
your program is going to fail. It was destined to fail. You know, I can't believe as a nation we allowed this type of scum to get into control of everything. But it sure as hell happened. Happened bigger than Dallas. But these little criminals have to know that the clock is ticking down. It's going down very, very quickly. And there's no way they're going to get out of any of it now. There's no way. I mean, there are a bunch of little wimpy lawyers. When you watch the leadership of the FBI, the leadership, the globals put scum at the top. They're good FBI agents and, you know, good federal marshals. In fact, I know a lot of them. They're great people. Best folks you can know in a lot of cases. But the top is a bunch of greasy sellout lawyers that would sell their own mother out just to strut around and act tough. And they, they walk into Congress and stick their chest out like, you want me to prosecute you? Awakening. Here's that report. In recent years, Brazilian politics was dominated by so called progressive leftist ideology. Black Lives Matter demonized the Brazilian police, while far left politicians began limiting their power. Eventually, the drug cartels began policing the streets. And with over 60,000 murders a year, a young Brazilian man has less chance of survival than a soldier in an active war zone. This paved the way for former Army Captain Jair Bolsonaro to win the presidency in a historical landslide victory. On January 1st, Bolsonaro was sworn in as president, and he said, I stand before the whole nation on this day the day when the people began to liberate themselves from socialism. It is urgent that we end the ideology that defends bandits and criminalizes policemen. Our concern will be for the safety of the good people, the guarantee of the right of property and legitimate self-defense. Immediately upon being sworn in, they passed a bill to provide police and soldiers freedom from prosecution while on active duty. They announced a plan for jail reform that will isolate the cartel leaders, separate the gangs, and terminate the use of mobile phones within the jail. Immediately following this, the gangs struck out against the new government. The Brazilian cartels burned and bombed dozens of public targets, including buildings, bridges, buses, and banks. Bolsonaro responded by sending 300 soldiers into the favelas to root out and attack the cartels. And he is sending in more. Days before he was elected, Bolsonaro said, there will be no shortage of places to send criminals. We'll dig graves. It appears as if Brazil is about to wage war against the drug cartels and allow law-abiding citizens to own firearms. Apparently, it is not politically correct to fight violent crime with violence. And so the mainstream media continues to demonize Bolsonaro. It will be interesting to see how things unfold. This is Greg Reese for NewsWars.com. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. All right. Everybody knows that when people get into Russia Gate, that I flip out and get angry because it's a hoax, it's a lie, it's a fraud to discredit the 2016 election. But if you focus on the stories around Russia Gate and what it covers up for, the illegal spying on candidate Trump, nominee Trump, President elect Trump, President Trump, and the perjury to Congress, the perjury to the American people, then it's powerful. So to walk through this, we heard that Robert Mueller III was going to end his investigation a year ago, and then six months ago, and then a month ago. It's been extended six months. And there's no Russiagate found. They've harassed all these Trump 
associates and found a few tax returns or taxi cab company issues, none of it connected to Trump. The New York Times had to spin it because they know it's coming out that McCabe is under criminal investigation. Grand juries are convened to indict him. That isn't like when it's on some message board and QAnon says it. It's in the Associated Press and Washington Post. I showed it last hour. It's no attention. There are criminal investigations of the entire cabal. Hillary Clinton, Comey, Robert Mueller, all of them. Because they're the ones with uranium and deals and lying to Congress. But when you pull back from the lies, they're, they're just mind-blowing. And so we have this attempted coup ongoing against the president with, with rogue FBI agents, with their insurance policy, and the news and the corporate media spins it that, oh, look, Trump was under criminal investigation. Yeah, we knew that. They lied. He was under espionage investigation, and they covered it up. They lied to Congress, and they admit nothing was there. Well, yes, because they were covering up their criminal investigations during the campaign of spying. They were covering up their investigations in case he got in because they were in bed with the Russians, with Uranium One and more. And so Roger Stone joins us to not defend himself. Everybody knows Roger Stone's not a Russian agent. There's no Russian connection. But to get into the meat and potatoes of this and how big this is and how crazy it's gotten and how we've both got reporters calling us asking about Alex Jones and RT and Alex Jones and Internet Research Group or whatever it's called, saying, well, it's known Jones got money from RT and these things. Zero. None. Ever. Total lie. And so... They do this over and over again. And then I actually Googled it and, and found all the old articles from a couple of years ago where they said, InfoWars and Breitbart under investigation for being Russian agents. But they use that to fund the media matters and, the, and, and these groups that get money to put out lies and lawsuits against us. Because once they say we're under investigation as Russians, that triggers what I just showed the, the, the executive orders that Obama signed before he left office triggering the CIA and FBI groups that Obama set up to come after us. So this is just astounding that this is happening. It was InfoWars back in early May 2017 that specifically said deep state pushes coup against Trump over Comey firing using rogue FBI agents. It's now all confirmed, Roger Stone. I mean, this is this is sensational the crimes they've committed. We're, you know, we've reached the end of this rabbit hole, the end of the trail. There's a stunning new development, and it boggles the mind. I mean, what we now know is pretty clear. Page one of the New York Times, which is immediately after Donald Trump justifiably fired rogue FBI director James Comey, who kept referring to it as his FBI as opposed to the taxpayer's FBI, the the, the American people's FBI, uh, that department began an espionage es uh, investigation into Donald Trump as to whether he was working for the Russians, which is, of course, laughable. But the worst part, Alex, is that investigation is still open today, open and active, which means Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein uh, and FBI Director Christopher Wray, who is a swamp preacher, if there ever was one, both lied under oath to the Congress and lied to the president's face about whether he was under investigation. So uh, while Adam Schiff is out falsely accusing me of perjury, here you have actual perjury by two of the highest officials in our federal law enforcement apparatus. Uh, and the question is, will anyone hold them responsible? Will they be prosecuted? In the question of Mr. Rosenstein, he's announced his investigation. That's because he knew this story was coming. Uh, but will Mr. Ray be fired? Because he should be fired. Roger, when we come back, I want to walk through this because the Russia investigation is meant to suck air out of the room. We won. America's coming back. They want to claim that Americans running their country is foreign when the globalists are the people that hate America. And we're all sick of it. We know it's a lie, but again, it's been the umbrella to, to, to run all these criminal investigations. Uh, we need to talk about, when we come back, what does President Trump need to do now? Because he has the proof. He knows they all lied to him. They lied to Congress. What does he do when we come back? And that means callers.
It's now they've moved on to myself and others. And it's surreal. It doesn't even make you angry. It makes you, like, nauseous, like you're living in a Twilight Zone world. And the traitors that hate the country are saying you're a traitor. And then CNN headlines and New York Times headlines today, Trump concealed meetings with Putin. And you read the article, it goes, actually, he didn't. It's quite normal uh, for the president to ask for the notes. And and there's nothing even there. It's it's totally insane. And you've got the president, even on Fox, that I notice is making a turn against him right now, which shows they're making their move. They're all neocons, except for a few people. I talked to high-level folks at Fox just last week. They say, oh, yeah, they're gunning for Carlson. They're gunning for Hannity, Ingram, anybody that actually isn't a traitor. And they just put this crap up there. This fake news is so intense now. You know, Alex, from the beginning, they have used a strategy of misdirection and distraction. Uh, and it is both offensive and defensive. First of all, of course, they need to cover up the egregious treasonous crimes of the Clinton-Obama regimes, in which Mr. Mueller himself is deeply complicit, since he is the person who schlepped the uranium samples to Stockholm for the Russians to inspect before they closed the largest treasonous financial crime in American history, the sale of Uranium One. Uh, and then offensively to distract us from the fact that they uh, uh, used uh, illicit, unconstitutional, and illegal FISA warrants as a rationale to spy on Donald Trump's top advisors. I was together with you in Washington, D.C. for the president's inauguration on January 20th, 2017, when we both read a front page story that said I was among three Trump advisors who were under surveillance during the presidential campaign. You could have knocked me over with a feather because there is no probable cause for that. No, don't say communications with WikiLeaks because A, WikiLeaks isn't a Russian asset and B, I had no communications with them other than the benign communications I've already publicly disclosed. So uh, this is both an offensive and defensive move. And now, as you pointed out, this story in CNN, Trump concealed the contents of his meetings. The president is entitled to conduct foreign policy negotiations in private. We would get nothing done if we tried to negotiate every agreement with a foreign nation in public. Plus, he's but surrounded by moles that lie about everything he says, but then they admit, actually, all presidents do this so they can have candid conversations, but they spend that like, look, we caught him in here again. Well, and we've seen uh, definitively how communications by telephone between the president and other foreign leaders end up on the front page of the New York Times. Now, who would be recording those? Who would be eavesdropping on the president of the United States? Who would have the capability, the technical capability to do that. Only the deep state, only the president's own intelligence operations. Uh, and we're, we're entering a realm now that is really extraordinary, where truth and facts and evidence and proof no longer matter. Because the Obviously, public doesn't have a memory. All their psych warfare chiefs say the public literally has a seven-second attention span. And, like, people aren't people anymore. I actually, almost no one I know even remembers anything. It's like zombies everywhere. I'm actually, actually, this is getting to me, Roger. No one, I love you so much because you have a long memory. Like, you have a better memory than I do. And I love talking to you because you remember stuff. Everyone I know has no memory now. I'm actually, I'm getting really freaked out. Well, in fact, InfoWars, the first media outlet in the country to explain the significance of the FISA warrants and why they were the centerpiece uh, of the of the egregious treasonous crimes of the Obama administration and an illicit effort to take down Donald Trump. Uh, I, when I wrote my book, The Making of the President 2016, uh, and there's a lot in there about the role the InfoWar played in Donald Trump's nomination which is absolutely key for people to understand. That's why they're trying to take us off the internet right now. That's precisely why we've been targeted. But it, the two things that I said in that book in which I turned out to be wrong was they completely underestimated Donald Trump. That's not true. They actually were worried about his winning. That's why Peter Stroke and others spoke about the insurance policy and this effort to uh, not only surveil the Trump campaign, but then to use the FBI to infiltrate Donald Trump's campaign 
in order to plant evidence of faux Russian collusion in case they needed to find it later. Uh, the uh, the uh, Russian, pardon me, the FBI asset going to George Papadopoulos, the FBI asset going to Carter Page, the FBI, FBI informant they sent to see me in May of 2016. Two months before the FBI admits... Yes, that they look, everyone viewing and listening, literally everyone knows it's a lot of crap. Let's talk about the new developments with them perjuring themselves to Congress, how they're making, how it's an active FBI coup against the president, how that's, that's banana republic. I mean, what does the president need to do? We know, we've said that before, but not the 55 trillion times you've, you've pointed out that they're lying about you. We get that, Roger. Uh, the, the, for people to tune in and listen to you, you've got to give them the rest of the story about what the president needs to do. Special counsels right now, puts it on Uranium One, puts it on Mueller. When the public hears he's been on tarmacs with, with, with giving him uranium in Russia, it's over. So why? Because he's so good on so many levels, but why doesn't he declassify the illegal spying on him with the FISA? Why doesn't he, uh, you know, declare the emergency? Why doesn't he execute when he, when he has them? They are the criminals. It's really a conundrum, I must say, because I've known Donald Trump extremely well for 40 years. He was at my wedding. I went to two of his weddings. I was at the wake and funeral for both his parents, his son-in-law. He is a decisive counterpuncher. He is, he is not a man who, who, who dithers uh, when the time comes. But you see it in the, in the fight over the war, where yesterday when he was asked about, are you going to initiate an emergency decree, he said, well, there's really no point because they challenge it in court, and then it would go to the Ninth Circuit, and then we lose, and then it would be hella. You could almost hear his pencil neck geek lawyers who are lily livered country club. Because, because Ronald Reagan didn't get channeled when he told the, uh, the air traffic controllers to go back to work. That's a load of crap. The president just ignores those rulings. That's exactly right. Like, as I said to you before, President Richard Nixon bombed Hanoi and mined Haiphong Harbor on Christmas Day with a two-party recalcitrant left-wing Democrat Congress trying to cut off his funding to prosecute the war. There comes a time for action. I am perplexed as why the president has not taken action in terms of undoing this silent coup that is being perpetrated against him. When we come back, let's talk about the specific things that he needs to do to save himself. And in America's face, trying to wreck our borders, trying to bankrupt our dollar, trying to screw our military over, funding Al-Qaeda, ISIS, protecting pedophile groups everywhere, total sexualization of children all over TV, all over uh, education of children. I mean, this is a mass of criminal evil attacking us. And then you've got it coming out. They lied to Congress about a espionage investigation against the president. They lied about multiple investigations during the campaign and after, which we knew were going on to cover up the fact that they were selling America out and they were scared that Americans might find out. And now all this has come out, and instead Fox News has turned decidedly against the president. He was on Fox News uh, just yesterday with uh, Mrs. Perino, dog chow, of the Bush dynasty, the uh, Bush tart, and they asked him, you know, if he was a Russian agent, uh, basically, because they've run these fake headlines that, why, he talked to Putin in private. Yeah, he's the damn president, you scumbags. So let's play that clip. Here it is. Are you now or have you ever worked for Russia, Mr. President? I think it's the most insulting thing I've ever been asked. I think it's the most insulting article I've ever had written. Uh, and if you read the article, you'd see that they found absolutely nothing. Now, that's the judge. Uh, the Perino asked the question, too, because they've all been asking that question. That's another clip. Um, Roger, again, I get that we have to counter each point of this as bull. But at a certain point, we counter their bull. They put us on the defense. Again, how do we go on the offense here against these criminals? Well, Alex, I actually want to go a step further and predict right now that you're going to see a spate of fake news stories in the next several days and weeks that say completely falsely that Alex Jones and Infowars are funded by the Russian state, that you have taken money from the Internet Research Agency that you've been on the payroll of RT, and I know firsthand that these are bald-faced lies. But you see, we're in a new realm here 
where they don't have to prove anything. And if they repeat the big lie over and over again, unfortunately, some Americans who aren't paying close attention begin to believe this. So you heard it here first, folks. The next time you hear Alex Jones is a Russian agent, he's taken millions of dollars or five dollars from the Russians, from the Internet Research Agency or RT. It's a lie. It's false. There is no evidence to that effect whatsoever. By the way, Alex, I got to tell you, I went last night to watch the new movie Vice with uh, with Christian Bale, and even though he is a Satanist, you have an extraordinary cameo at the end of this movie. And the movie, as a libertarian who opposed the Iraq wars, I know you did, is completely and totally historically accurate. Despite the fact that they denigrate conservative media in the movie, it is an epic piece of filmmaking for people who love peace and truth, and you have a great cameo at the end. Uh, yeah, look, the left attacked the movie because it humanized Cheney, but only humanized him and his piranha-like behavior. I thought, from what I know about history, it was very accurate overall, except for a few backslaps at real conservatives. But yeah, I don't know why they put me at the end of the movie, though. I mean, because they know I exposed Cheney in 9-11 and was not a, 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 a Cheney fan. They know that, but I think they were just putting me there to say, like, oh, look, you know, this is part of the toxicity of the world. I don't know. All I know is the movie theater. I saw it when your picture came up. People were cheering. So it was a very good sign, in my opinion. It's a great piece of filmmaking. I recommend it. If you're anti-war and you want to know the truth about the criminality of the Bush-Cheney years, you can read my book, The Bush Crime Family. You can keep watching InfoWars because we've been very forthright in reporting it. But see this movie. It is worth your time. No, I'm not just saying it because they put me in it. I wasn't paid. I didn't even know I was in it till I was in Omaha visiting my wife's sick dad. And I'm sitting there at breakfast reading this review of Dick Cheney, and then it says, and Alex Jones is at the end, or the movie's Vice. And I was like, yeah, whatever. But when it, once I went and saw it, it was, it was, it was pretty and actually historically accurate and informative. Um, Roger, let, let's just pull back here again because... The distraction here is that Trump's pulling us out of countries in war, and more Democratic congressmen and women support war now than Republicans. Um, Trump is ending putting black people in prison three times longer than whites uh, for the same drug offense. The left hates him for it. Uh, Trump's the lowest black unemployment ever recorded. They hate him for that. I mean, you look at everything he's doing, it's what a JFK would do. So to even call him a Republican, this isn't even what fits. So I just don't get why he's, he's doing all these good things and they don't give a damn. Well, it's because Trumpism is bigger than the Republican Party, is bigger than either party, because it's Americanism. He is reasserting American sovereignty and American exceptionalism and American opportunity. They predicted that he would create 177,000 jobs in the last quarter. That number came in at 317,000. It blew everyone's mind. I looked for it everywhere on the front page of the Washington Post. It wasn't there. I looked for it on the front page of the New York Times. It wasn't there. And of course, CNN underplayed the numbers. No, he's delivered on issue after issue. It is only when his own lily-livered, weak-kneed, uh, neocon, war hawk advisors get to him uh, that we don't get the undiluted Donald Trump. The man's heart is true. His instincts are good. And when he follows his instincts, America wins. Look, what he needs to do is pretty clear. We need a special counsel to investigate Uranium One, the largest treasonous crime in American history. It takes you right to Bill and Hillary and their phony foundation, which was a vehicle for the facilitation of multi-million dollar bribes. It also takes you in to Mr. Robert Mueller. He needs to, under a legal decision that was rendered during the Nixon administration, limit the scope of Mr. Mueller's investigation to Russian collusion, not anything he feels like looking into. He could do that tomorrow. By all counts, Matthew Whitaker is a good man, a true believing American, a conservative who's entitled to his political opinions. If Jeannie Ree can work for Robert Mueller and investigate me when she represented Hillary Clinton, if Aaron Zelinsky can work at the Clinton uh, State Department and his emails were among those released by WikiLeaks and that's not a conflict, well then Matthew Whitaker has no conflict. The president needs to move. Power that is not law used is power that is lost. You must use power or you lose power. This president 
has the people behind him. The only people who are opposed to his efforts to end war are the neo the neocons uh, and the extremists on either you know broad uh, wing of the country. The vast majority of Americans are tired of endless foreign war where our inherent national interests are not clear. I really believe the American people are with this president, but he needs to exercise power now. Make no mistake about it, Alex. They intend to vote articles impeachment on him on any propped up, pardon the word, trumped up bogus charge. Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, Maxine Waters. And notice they always said during the campaign that's not their plan, but you always said it was their plan. And now uh, they've got that uh, idiot uh, Cummings, who's on 60 Minutes tonight, saying, oh, we're going to hit the road flying to impeach him as soon as we get in. Just what a group of idiots. Those people couldn't manage their way out of a wet paper bag. Your budget in staff. I'm sorry, we got technical difficulties today. We might just end the show now. Hey, Roger, really appreciate you coming on the show with us. Um, we'll talk soon. Really appreciate you. And uh, who knows? You know, maybe America, I'm, I'm serious, maybe America doesn't deserve a recovery in the future because it's just everything's collapsing, anyways. This is what everybody wants. Everybody, I look at the globalists and how predatory and evil they are, and they make me sick. But you know what? We got something positive we're going to air for you in a moment. We're going to have a victory tonight. We're going to play a clip. Coming up in the last four minutes of tonight's broadcast, I'm going to air something really good and informative for you. And it's by Senator Ted Cruz, who beat Pedo O'Rourke. Ted Cruz wants El Chapo to pay for the border wall. We're going to air that clip. What a blessing we're here to air that clip. We're going to do that. And you've got Venezuela on the edge with its communist dictatorship on collapse. You've got patriots taking over all over. So I should be really, really positive. It's just learning that the Clintons and, and, and the Bushes and others were literally selling America out at every level. And that Trump turned things around until they sabotaged the economy for a while. And that it isn't more obvious to everyone. It's not about Trump. And it's not about Alex Jones. It's about the fact that the people are so disconnected and so divorced from reality that they don't even see their own self-preservation. And look, I know the polls are fake. I know that we got more seats in the Senate and there was major election fraud and Republicans really won the House. And so this is a huge awakening. But it doesn't matter. It's got to override the fraud. It's got to defeat the fraud. Because now that the arrogant criminals have figured out we're fighting back, they're coming in with everything they've got. And so this is the real fight right now. This weekend, I didn't even get to the news. I told you we caught the local leftist groups at public schools and at public events having five-year-old children dance with naked men. But as long as it's a cultural outreach or it's LBGTP, it's okay. I saw new articles this weekend in gay porno mags. They're putting little boys in them hell i'll pull the article up i got it right here i never saw it in my stack pull it up i'll pull it up for you right now people say oh look what you're looking at on your phone yeah i'm looking at it on my phone i'm researching it makes me sick makes me sick oh what are you anti-gay i don't care if it's heterosexual or homosexual keep your damn hands off kids here, i'll pull it up i'll pull it up hey take a while but i'm gonna do it because it's an article I was going to cover today. One way or another, I'm going to expose this stuff. I mean, the headline's everywhere, actually. Uh, headline. Child featured next to naked man in gay magazine. That's the headline. It's everywhere. It's going on. And it's just all part of this throwing it in your face and doing this. And, 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 and flaunting it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it's this never been done in history. Yeah, 10 year old drag kid photographed with naked adult drag queen. Hell, what are you talking about? They're putting it in magazines right here in Austin. We sent Millie Weaver down there. She said she had to take like five showers. We can't even show it on TV. We're simulcast on TV. There's a naked guy with a big old thing he want and he's got glitter on it but now they're doing it with just naked men period because you're putting up with it 
So, yeah, I'm upset about this. Oh, and by the way, almost all these young boys, they've got telling their girls here in the U.S. and England, it turns out, are autistic. So they're taking mentally disabled children and putting them into all this. Oh, but don't worry. YouTube took down our video showing young boys with naked men on stage humping each other because they said it violated age restriction. Oh, so you can have kids with naked men, but I can't put it on YouTube to raise the alarm. Exactly. Exactly. Even when we blur it out, stations threaten to dump us. And I understand why. E exactly. Because you're not a pedophile. The station owners are, or managers are not pedophiles. You know what? I get it. But how the hell am I not supposed to fight this if I can't show you what's going on? Let me tell you, it puts me into a red rage watching this. I have a son. I have three daughters. And I have an instinct to protect them. And you look at these globalists, when you look at the, the leadership of the, of, the, of the deep state, the Democrats, the neocons, the leadership of the FBI, which is only the very top 1%, their operating system is pedophilia. The Catholic Church hijacked by globalists, pedophilia. It's, it, this is who they are. And so I don't want to cover this anymore. This isn't who I am. I don't even want to talk about this. But that's who they are. They have a hunger for your children. They're coming. Get it off screen. I can't watch it. They have a hunger for your children. They want to corrupt your children and induct them into a destructive soul-sucking lifestyle and they're going to do it until you say no period every form of evil is obsessed with destroying innocence and now what are you going to do the good news is uh, i'm not for asset forfeiture seizure when it's unconstitutional i don't like it inside the united states but at ports and on borders it's constitutional and totally normal it's a form of tariff. So if they bust drug dealers bringing in drugs or bringing in money with kidnapped children, like Obama does, he's been caught shipping in kids that were kidnapped, sent report, we take the money. And it just so happens it'll pay for the wall and more. So he